Everyone, this is Chris, and I'd like to invite you to this conversation about your Kundalini awakening experiences. So, hello, 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 welcome. Uh, I'll just go ahead and, and start and uh, make sure my phone's not going to interrupt anybody. Okay. Uh, so, today I'd like to talk to you about purification. And the Kundalini's effect on the purification and detox of your body. Uh, we'll go into the dietary aspects. We'll also go into the the mental aspects, psychological aspects, the spiritual aspects, the physical aspects. Uh, so let's start with the physical. Let's start with the body. Uh, one of the symptoms of strong Kundalini purification of the body is through the skin and rashes occur on the individual. Uh, rashes may occur, and they they look like like a heat rash, but sometimes the the little blisters can be larger than. And say that you know the, the micro blister that you might get with the heat rash. Sometimes they're just the same. Uh, it's important for you to realize that this is the heat rash from the Kundalini. This is something from the Kundalini. This is not something that is uh, a detriment to you. Uh, this will not hurt you, although it does pain you. So I, you understand I'm, I'm differentiating hurt from pain. Painting you is something that is temporary. Hurting you would be something that's of a, of, of a longer lasting nature. So as these Kundalini rashes occur, typically they'll go away in about three days. And I will suggest that you do not itch them. You do not scratch them. You do not open up those blisters. You don't apply ointments or medication to them either. Uh, if you want to do anything to them, you can take a, a, a baking soda bath or sodium, a bicarbonate of soda bath. And, you know, with that, you use like a, a half of a small box of, of uh, sodium bicarbonate in a, in a bath of hot water, no soaps, no lotions, no shampoo, none of this. And you just soak it in that water and you'll feel a bit of a slime for lack of a better term, a bit of a, uh, a coating, shall we say, a kind of a slimy coating on your body. And that will also begin to pull out uh, uh, impurities from your skin. However, the Kundalini is taking much more than just physical impurities out of you. It's taking a lot of negative energy out of you. It is, it is pushing... Uh, hurtful emotions out through your skin. It's pushing uh, levels of imbalance. It's pushing uh, physical toxicities out of your skin. And so it's very important for you to understand that this is a good thing. This is a really good thing. And, and you really want to give yourself time and the ability to to have these kundalini rashes and they'll look terrible you know you, you go to your doctor about this and you go oh my god this is indicative of this terrible terrible disease i'm so glad you came in because you're not going to die now <laughs> and frankly you know frankly you know it does look like some some kind of a of an allergic response or something of that nature and it's just not uh, you can get some pretty splotchy skin with this. And it will cover your chest. It will cover your face. It will cover your legs, your armpits, your, your abdominal areas, your back. I mean, there is no place on the body that is not going to be, shall we say, 
purified in this way. And once again, it is not damaging you. It is not a response to a dis-ease. It is strictly a response to detoxification of the body by the actual consciousness of the Kundalini that is actually going to work in your body. And you can look at that really as a validation of the actuality of Kundalini upon you. Okay? You understand? Now, I have to say, it's really hot here. I'm in the Spartan trailer, as I usually am when I do these things now. I have new friends. I have four new goldfish that will be going into a pond. And I have a new snowy egret friend who is using this area as a halfway house. And I'll be feeding him his salmon uh, after we're done here. So if you hear some squawking or if he comes flying over, that's what's going on here. So I just wanted to, to give you a heads up about that. Uh, to, to further the purification aspect of the Kundalini, you're going to find yourself crying tremendous amounts of tears. Tremendous, endless amounts of tears. I mean, rivers of tears. I'm, I'm sure that's been used in a song somewhere <laughs> it's, it's true not only because you're say you're reliving a an experience that has caused you pain uh, like a heartbreak or a uh, death of a of a friend or family uh but more so because the kundalini is coming through you and she is purifying you through your tears your tears are like this relief valve. And so as you cry, as the tears come out, so do a lot of the issues pour out of you. If you can imagine your emotions uh, having a liquid nature, tears are loaded with emotion. If we had an emotionometer, my word, <laughs> if we had an emotionometer, then, and we, we, we took a little tear and we put that in the emotionometer, you'd see it have a huge amount of emotion in those tears. And these tears need to come out. But also, because they are laden with emotions, they're also laden with extreme levels of love. Tears have so much love in them. Just amazing. So once again, the, the emotionometer would go off the charts <laughs> with the amount of love. I'm sorry, every time I, I laugh, this whole thing shakes. So my apologies for that. I don't quite, yeah. So I'll try not to laugh. Be very serious. So here we are. So as we continue with the purification, you'll be crying a lot. Okay. Uh, when you have ecstasy and you have bliss, you're crying a lot. Okay. And those tears are loaded with love and with grace. And I want to say hello to everybody who has joined. I think we have a, about 27 here right now. So hello, everybody. And I want you to, to feel free to ask questions. And aloha to you, Chris Lange. Uh, ask the questions. Uh, say hi to Tommy and Patricia and Chris Werges and... Buchebe and Eric Loff and Sherry. Hi, Sherry. And uh, David and Bridget and Robert. And uh, so feel free. I will be monitoring this side, uh, this side thing here. Sorry for my lack of computer lingo. Chica, Tanya, Anapam, Dwayne, the Reverend Dwayne. Hello. And uh, Aaron Mashmeyer. So hello, everybody. Uh, as we continue with the purification, you'll be, on the physical level, you'll get a rash. Uh, you may get uh, rapid leg movement or RLS. And they, 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 make, they made that into a syndrome. How convenient for them. That means they must have some sort of pharmaceutical that can put that down. But I want you to let your leg move. 
I want you to let your arm move. Let your fingers tap. Do whatever they need to do. This is from the Kundalini. This is not a syndrome. Oh, I don't want to laugh because I'll shake it. But anyway, uh, you know, anything to make a buck, right, here in the good old USA. So anyway, uh, you may have the uh, rapid leg uh, uh, movements. Uh, you may have twitches. Your eye may just start going. Dee, 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 dee. That's okay. That's also part of the purification. Okay. Uh, you may have extreme mood swings, and and on a physicality, this this would be equal to bipolarism. And of course, you know the the if you went into the ER and you said, "Wow, you know, doc." I got on. It's just like one minute. I'm just really happy, and the next minute I'm really sad. And the, the doctor's going, "Oh, well, you know, I, we have some drugs for that," <laughs> which is basically all they do. We have some drugs for that. So here we go. You know, uh, this is normal for Kundalini as well. Okay, you're gonna have, you're gonna go from happy to sad in a nanosecond. Ask anybody that knows me. <laughs> it's like, wah, 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 wah. So, and what this doing is this is this is widening the uh, availability of emotional expression through the physical body to a degree that is far better. Like normal humans will be right here. Kundalini people are way, way, way out here. But in order to to hold that position, you have to experience it. You have to go way out here where you can't see my fingers anymore. This is normal. This is part of the expansion, but also part of the detoxification. Because as you have these, these negative experiences of heartbreak or grieving a, the death of a loved one or feeling like you don't belong to this world or feeling like everybody is, is distant from you and nobody likes you and there's no love for you. You're not going to have a boyfriend or a girlfriend or a wife or a spouse. You won't have children. You won't, have, you won't be able to have chickens in your yard. <laughs> Which is important for tick control, you know. But anyway, all of these emotions all of these emotions will come up into you and they are a form of detox. They are a form of purifying the emotional body. So you need to accept, accept those emotions, accept, A-C-C-E-P-T, -A -E accept them and allow them to run their course through you knowing, knowing, that these are brought on by the kundalini as a purification. Okay. A lot of people just like, oh my God. I don't want to think about that heartbreak. I don't want about I want to think about the death of my mom or my dad or my dog or my cat or whatever. I don't I just don't want to think about that. And you don't have to unless the kundalini brings it up. Unless it has formed a blockage in you that is poisoning your emotional system, keeping you from reaching into those areas of the heart that have been hurt, damaged. And it's not an overnight process either. It takes a while for these areas to, to become purified from the, you know, sometimes it's a karma thing, sometimes it's a, uh, it's just your normal reaction from the expectations of society. When my father died, you know, I, I remember just thinking, it's like, oh my God, my Kundalini is going to amplify the shit out of this. And I'm going to have to deal with this in front of my family. In front of, and he was a very popular man. He was a teacher, and an avid cyclist. And so they had to rent an auditorium for his weight and I was expected to go up and speak and I was just guys just like you know you have the sunglasses on because you're screaming tears and whatnot and, and I was just praying to my kundalini just let me 
say the words that that are truly indicative of my love for my father. And she did. She did. She gave me, she gave me a break. Uh-oh, I'm laughing again. She gave me a break, and I was able to, to be coherent into the microphone. And so she will do this for you as well. But for the most part, you need to grieve. You need to have that emotional expression as part of the detoxification back into emotional balance. What happens when you get connected to the all that is, uh, you know, through the Kundalini? Your physical systems, the, the five expressions of the human body, the physical expression, the emotional expression, the psychological expression, uh, what's the other one? I want this. the spiritual expression and the emotional expression. Hopefully I didn't repeat myself. Did I repeat myself, anybody? Physical, mental, emotional, psychological, spiritual. There we go. All of these areas are going to get worked on at the same time. And so you're having information come from here, and information come from here, and there, and there, and all these different directions happening all at the same time. And why she does this, I think, really is to excite a level of surrender so that you don't get to choose where you're going to purify from you know this is part of your surrender you you don't get to have a choice on oh today i just want to work on mental issues thank you very much or oh today i just want to work on the spiritual issues thank you very much you don't get to do that she will choose for you and she will use combinations of those five expressions of the body in a way that allows for purification to occur okay so as you experience you know these these heavy emotions speaking of the emotional body at this point uh you just must let it flow because we went from bipolarism bipolarism you know and the you know the expansion of the emotional spectrum uh is exceptionally important to the Kundalini because we are we are our emotions it affects how we feel about ourselves they affect how we feel about others they affect how we feel about living a life on this world at all emotions are the treasure but they can also be the trap so treasure or trap and so you really need to allow the Kundalini through your surrender to begin these emotional purges through the physical system. Now I connected this to the physical, you know, through the, you know, like the, uh, the Kundalini rashes and the, the ticks in the eye, because the emotions will have a direct effect upon the physical. But I want to get back to the physical some more. So as you're entering into the Kundalini, a lot of you, that have the kundalini active in you for some years now you realize some of this and so i apologize if this is just review for you but there are a lot of you that don't have this and i want you to have the availability of this knowledge your food choices will change and these will also be part of the physical spiritual uh detoxification process kundalini will control this she'll control whether you're eating meat she'll control whether you're eating uh vegetation just it's the human ego and the programming that says, well, I can't be a vegetarian. I've been a meat eater all my life. That's just the way it's going to be. Now I ain't going to eat any of that green stuff. No, none of this. I grew up with people like that. So you can see I, I have the experience there. Steak and potatoes, right? Well, Kundalini to a person like that will turn that right on its rear end and say, all you can eat now is those broad green leafy thingies. All you can, <laughs> all you can have right now are the veggies. And not only that, that's all you're going to want to have. You stick a prime rib in there, it's going to come straight out with velocity. <laughs> Sorry, I'm laughing here. My, my apologies. <laughs> 
Conversely, conversely, if you're in a position, if your Kundalini has placed you in a society where you can be vegetarian or uh, carnivorous, shall we say, or omnivore, uh, then all you'll be able to eat for a certain amount of time is meat. Meat, meat, meat. And I'm going to suggest that you get deer meat. Get wild game if you can. Uh, deer are not a an endangered species any more than, you know, uh, they're not an endangered species. And so if you can find a, a uh, purveyor of exotic meat like elk, deer, um, pheasant, uh, ptarmigan, quail, dove, you know, the... If you can find, a, if you can't hunt yourself, which is the first thing, right? Then go to a purveyor of exotic meats and, and see what you can do. I know that one of my students, uh, Sam, has done this, and you know he's he's gotten some pretty beneficial results from it, and I think you will too. Uh, but Kundalini will direct you to eat meat, and even though you've been a vegetarian or worse than that, a vegan, your entire life. Uh, or a, a large part of your life, uh, you'll be compelled to eat meat, fish, chicken, uh, e even uh, bovine, cow meat, deer, elk, and, and some of the other species that I named. And, and you do this with gratitude for the, for the spirit of the animal entering into your tapestry of life, very much like the Native American. You know, if, if you uh, if you know of any of the uh, Native Americans, they're very, very grateful for the life of the hunt and of the prey that they have taken. It's very important. Uh, even in, in a in a what was it a, a movie uh, Avatar? If you watch the movie Avatar, you know they show a great deep respect. Uh, for their prey and, and, and for killing other things. And I'll get into that in another program. But your diet will be adjusted by kundalini. Sometimes it will be meat and vegetables, but very specific meats and very specific vegetables. Sometimes it will be just veg vegetables. Sometimes it'll just be fruits and nuts. Sometimes she'll have you fast. These are all part of the purification process that the kundalini is enlisting to begin to purify the gross elements of imbalance out of your system. Okay. So within that understanding, surrender your dietary habits to your Kundalini. Don't, don't sit there and think, well, this is what I like. This is what I'm going to eat. So this is not way it's going to be. Don't do that. Listen, I made all the mistakes in the book. I made every mistake you could possibly make because this came, I wasn't planning on this, my, you know, my history, and but my ego mind was not having any of this. And so I had to be shown the hard way, every way, the hard way. So take it from somebody who's walked what he's talking right now. Give yourself into the surrender. Give it deeply and sincerely. All right. And, and we'll talk about other ways to give that surrender too, but I want to continue with the purification. I don't, uh, for Kundalini people, I would not suggest, uh, I would suggest that you trust the grace. I'm just going to rephrase this. I will, first of all, don't take anything I say as medical advice. Okay. Not, an MD. I've worked with MDs, but by working with MDs, I saw how frequently off the mark they are. And I would not want an MD to go off the mark on you because they don't understand the Kundalini. Okay. So part of the purification process is to commit yourself to the trust and the surrender of Kundalini to such a degree that you don't need to take any kind of an immunization against anything. I've traveled all over the world 
and not one time have I taken an immunization. When I was working with the MDs, when I was working medical, yeah, I had to take those immunizations. So I probably have some weird disease that the Kundalini is, has obliterated in me. And so many of you may have the same thing, but you got to trust your grace. Every step that you've taken on this path of Kundalini refinement has been there on purpose. It has not been an accident. No accidents within Kundalini. It may seem that way to the ego. It may seem that way to your scientific logic mind, A plus B equals C, but it's, it's not by chance that you're even listening to some old guy in an old trailer in 90 degree heat talking to you about Kundalini. And Hungarian Lotus is saying that, she says, I have those rashes many times. They come and go. And so that's true. I've seen her rashes and she gets them really great. I mean, she's, we even have pictures of it on the uh, Kundalini Awakening exclamation point group. Uh, David says, uh, David is Master Chrism. Could you please speak about what happens when we die? Where our souls go? What questions do we have to answer after leaving physical life? Where and how? Are we between incarnations? Please feel free to skip this question <laughs> if you feel it is off the, the topic. Well, David, I will indeed touch on that, but I'm going to go through the purification first, but I won't forget. I won't forget. Okay, so uh, trust your grace to keep you from getting sick. And if you do get sick, that's an indication of a strengthening of your immune system. Now, I'm not suggesting you go into a, you know, a, 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 a disease ward and, you know, do deep breathing right next to the mouth of an individual that's like dying of, of a communicable disease. I'm not suggesting that. Uh, but you could. You could. But don't do it because we don't know what your karma is like and whether or not that's an appropriate thing for you to do. Okay. But the more trust you have in your grace, the healthier your body is going to be. You still have to do the work. You still have to, to exercise. You still have to uh, comb your hair, brush your teeth, uh, uh, you know, be good to your skin. You have to maybe get a massage every now and again if you can afford it. Uh, you got to do the conscious body maintenance as well. Okay. Make sure in the lower areas, uh, the, the rectum and, and, you know, the areas around there that you keep that very, very clean and dry. I mean, really, if you can get a bidet, which you can look that up on Google, I'm not going to explain that to you, but if you get a B I D E T, then get one and attach it to, to into your bathroom so that you can use that to keep these areas clean. It's very important because a lot of the detoxification from the physical comes out with the excrement of the individual, the feces of the individual. And if you leave those toxins on the skin, if you're not really super clean in that area, those toxins are going to burn you. Yeah, they will burn you. And, you know, just want to keep those areas really, really clean and, and save yourself from discomfort. Uh, it can, if, you, if, if you're habitual with, with not keeping those areas clean, uh, you can turn the ring muscles of the rectum into a, uh, like the, it'll develop crevices or uh, it'll, the, you know, the skin in the ring muscle will split. And then some of that, uh, excrement will will fill in those micro splits within that area. It's a very very sensitive area, and I know you don't like talking about it, but we got to talk about it because it's part of the body, and it's a very important part of the purification detoxification system. So I don't want you to to allow uh, any level of of uh, of bowel movement to to lodge itself into, into those crevices. If you know, if you're my age or, you know, even, even younger, if you've already developed those crevices, then I want you to be very, very astute and clean 
in how you uh, have your bowel movements daily. Make sure it is absolutely clean. I don't care if it takes more time to get hot water and just use hot water really in tissue and just really clean that area really good. And, and, and the area beyond, the area in front of it, the area behind it, and the area on both sides. Really important. You won't regret it. Believe me, you won't regret it. Okay, moving on. Uh, with further purification, uh, you need to stop using your hair products. I know, I know, stepping on a lot of toes here, stepping a lot on a lot of painted toenails, <laughs> which, which I would also suggest that you, you stop doing. As much as possible, bring your body into its natural expression. You don't see a lot of hair color. You know, I used to be a bottled gray, you know, but you know, I just had to give it up. I'm kidding. Uh, you want to let your hair be as natural as it is. Let the color that it needs to be, let that be. You don't need to dye your hair. I mean, why are you dyeing your hair? What part of your egotism says, oh, damn, there's a gray hair there. What am I going to do? <laughs> well, I'm either going to yank it out or I'm going to change the color, you know, and if you got a lot of gray hairs, so it's like, oh, my God, I've got to change it to something else. I want you to embrace who you are. I want you to embrace the person that you are, the physical being that you are, meaning the physical body that you are, the natural person that you are. I don't see anybody going around with, with food color and eye drops so that they can change their eye color. Although I see them doing that with those little lenses, the, the little contact lenses. You don't need to do this. I'm not saying it's a sin, but it is, you know, being meaning off the mark, but I mean that it is kind of off the mark. A lot of this, uh, makeup and hair coloring and these types of things are, for society rather than for the Kundalini. Now, I don't really have a problem with makeup because it's temporary. Uh, but with the hair color, it's a lot less temporary. And it can make your hair brittle, your hair can break, uh, and you can start losing hair because of the, the toxic chemicals that you're putting into it. And I apologize to anybody that's out there that's really addicted to their hair color whatever that may be. But if, if you have to do that, if you absolutely, oh my God, I can't look at myself in the mirror unless I have a certain color of hair, get organic uh, um, vegetation-based safe, safe uh, chemicals to, to, to change the hair with, okay? Change the hair color. Uh, moving onward. You're going to get some acne. In addition... <laughs> <laughs> to the to the uh, to the rashes you're gonna get some some acne on your back on your chest uh, your inner thigh area on your back on your bum on your knees uh, your elbows your shoulders your neck uh, and I'm not talking copious amounts of acne I'm not talking about that but it's gonna be more than you're normally used to having but it's temporary it is a temporary thing and uh, be okay with it. You'll get these little blisters around your fingers and around your thumb, and you're just like, "Oh God, what is that?" You know, and it, and it, and it, you know, and it, it can be frightening to people. And so, I don't want you to be frightened about this. This is your Kundalini constantly at work, detoxing your physical body. Trust it. Be okay with it. Let it go. Let it go. Okay. Don't don't stress over it. It's like. Uh, 2015, my hands were literally molting, seriously molting. Uh, the, the skin of my hands were just erupt, just peeling right off, and it wasn't going really fast. It was going nice and slow, so, so I could really enjoy it. So, yeah, uh, the skin was coming off and in between the fingers here and all the way up to the wrist. Okay, it wasn't doing anything below the wrist, but everything, the thumb, you know, the, this area of the, of the thumb and forefinger, all the way up to the fingernail, 
everything was peeling and I was guided by the Kundalini. This is normal. This is okay. I made a video about it. And if anybody seen my videos on YouTube, uh, go to Chrisum Kundalini on YouTube and you'll see the videos there about 350. So you'll have to page through some of them. Uh, but yeah, this was just part of the detoxification. This lasted over a year, over a year. And, you know, I was wearing gloves and I was wearing <laughs> different oils to aid, not to stop, but to aid the, the, uh, the purification. And so you've got to really understand that some of these purification things can take a long, long time to remedy themselves. This is the Kundalini. This is not, you're not afflicted with anything. My hands are just fine right now. I mean, you know, look at that. Now the palm readers are going, ah, ah, I got you there. I can see you. Oh, there's a lifeline. Oh, there's a love line. They're going to freeze it. Go, oh, 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 what a life that guy has. <laughs> anyway, and that's okay. I'm, I'm fine with that. I'd like to say hi to, to Danny, Maggie, Joanna, Natalia, Blaze, Alexandra, Taylor, Zell, Zell, Rilishko, uh, Greta, Damika, and let's see. Uh, uh, let's, let's just continue here. So that's about as far as I think I need to go with the physical aspects of the purification. You'll sweat more. Oh, okay. No, I got more to do. Sorry. I'm getting all these pictures now flooding in. Uh, if you're homeless uh, and you are not, you don't have a shower available for you. Uh, when I was homeless, I didn't take a shower or a bath for over a year. And I know everybody's going, oh, gee, ah, oh, my God. I, I can smell it through the video. It's horrible. Uh I would wake up every morning with a golden waxy material on top of the skin that you could just peel right off and it smelled like cedar trees. You know that scented cedar that you smelled like that. And I gave, you know, I, I, I asked friends to, to risk their lives and do a smell test and nobody had a problem. It was not, a, she takes care of you. Your sacred mother takes care of you just the way your mother changed your diapers. Well, she will change uh, the level of of, uh, of grime and grease and whatever that you collect during the day through your sweat and through the uh, contact with uh, automobile exhaust and and insects and solar radiation. She will clean this from you, and she did. And she did that for a long time for me, and I'm very grateful to this day for that that kind, loving attention. And I want you to be okay with that too. If you're in that position, you're in that position for a reason. It's not accidental. You didn't just lose your job. You didn't have your house burned down and can't afford to keep up the payments. And so now you're out on the street sleeping under an overpass. It's not accidental. You're learning, learning very, very, very important lessons and you need to embrace it. Trust your Kundalini and move forward. This is not a DNS either, not a dark night of the soul. That's a different thing. We'll talk about that in another video uh, lesson. Okay. So that level of detoxification will, will occur. Uh, you'll have, your ears will begin to detox. And I know this can sound weird, but it is what it is. Uh, your ears will begin to detox, which means they will begin to produce copious amounts of earwax. And you can actually feel that being developed. You'll feel the, uh, some of the, the, uh, the organs of the ear vibrating a lot. And you'll just feel ex excessive amounts of earwax being developed. I mean excessive. So you want to get in there with a Q-tip gently, very, very gently, and begin to pull out some of that earwax so your hearing doesn't get plugged up. Pay attention when you're showering to, to washing the ear and to taking care of the ear and, uh, and, and you know, it, it's a deal because it, it can't interrupt your hearing. So there's excessive amounts of earwax. 
uh, you may have some rhinitis. You may have some uh, some problems with your sinuses, and you know this is also a level of detox here. So just be aware of this. Nothing is wrong with you. If you have Kundalini, far more is right with you than is wrong with you. She's just correcting levels of imbalance, and she'll do it automatically. You may have to lift a finger with you know paying attention to the foods she wants you to eat uh, and, and drinking more water. You must drink copious amounts of water, ladies and gentlemen. Seriously, copious amounts. Now, I'm not talking about a gallon a day, but maybe half of that, maybe a half a gallon a day if you can. You know, and, 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 and have tea. You know, don't have the, the caffeine. Have tea. Herb tea. Uh, if if she if you're feeling her guiding you towards a liver cleanse, then have some dandelion tea. Okay, uh, feel what she wants you to take. You know, go into that store and just kind of stand there and ask your sacred mother what she wants you to get, and then get it. Differentiate that from the from the ego, though. All right. Uh, hi, Ruth. Good to see you. Uh, David Sylvester. Good to see you. Um, so as we continue. Getting little flashes of light here. Oh, yeah. Okay. Here we go. For those of you that are not doing yoga, I want you to begin to engage in a light level of restorative yoga. Don't go heavy into Ashtanga or hot yoga or any of those things. I've tried them. They're not necessary. Okay. You need to go very gentle. You need to hold that pose. Hold the pose for three to four minutes. If you can hold the pose for five minutes, even better. But make sure you do it on both sides of the body. This is also aiding the purification and the detoxification and continuing the flexibility of the body so that you can have the kriyas that she wants you to have. So that she's not like, you know, pulling you apart by having a kriya because you haven't kept yourself flexible. Uh, I don't care if you're 9 or 90. <coughs> wow, the door just opened by itself. Yay. Uh, I don't care if you're 9 or 90. <laughs> uh, uh, do some of that yoga. Do some of that yoga. Okay. Try to do it daily. Here's the thing with yoga. You know, people go over and over and over to these yoga classes. And I think a lot of it is for the social thing. You know, it's like, whoa, you know, chicks and tights. Yeah, baby, I'm there. Uh, or, <laughs> it's just like, no. Go to it as long as it takes you to memorize the routine. Then stop going to the studio and do it at home. You're not doing this to excite your libido. You're doing this to to be in balance with your kundalini, to listen to your kundalini and, and, to, and, and go on YouTube. Use YouTube too. It, I, I don't want you to turn it into a social event. You can, and it's not bad, but it, it tends to lend itself more towards egotism than, you know, say doing it at home by yourself on your old yoga mat in front of your cat or dog or or snowy egrets, or whatever it may be, okay? Do the yoga. If you can't do the yoga, do Tai Chi. If you can't do Tai Chi, do Pilates. But get out there and work the flexibility of the body. It's very, very important that you do so. And of course, you know, with the safeties, some of the easiest yoga you can do are the five Tibetans. And they're vertical, too, because they will pull energy from one position to the next position to the next on up to the throat. So this also helps the detox. Stand by a second here. I'm accessing. Vitamins. Um, write this down if you can, if you have the opportunity to. Uh, a thousand milligrams of of a multivitamin C. So it has a thousand milligrams of ascorbic acid in it. From try to get it from a natural source. 
It'll have 500 milligrams of citrus bioflavanols. It'll have uh, 500, 100 to 500 uh, milligrams of looking for the word here. Rutin, R-U-T-I-N. Um, at least get it with those three components in them, okay? That's for the vitamin C. Uh, if you're heavy into the Kundalini transformation at the moment, having Kriyas, whatnot, uh, I want you to get a, a, a B100. So you have, you know, 100 milligrams of all the Bs, and you'll have niacinamide in there, 100 milligrams. You'll have uh, vitamin A, probably up to 15,000 individual units. You'll have vitamin E, uh, anywhere from two to 800 individual units natural to set for all. In addition to that, grape seed extract or pycnogenol. Uh, can be can be added into that, and then of course you want you know you only take this two times a week, two times a week. So like say a Monday and a Thursday, okay. One word I'm still searching for with that, but it, it'll probably come later on. Um, if you're shaving your face, uh, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> or your legs. Uh, I want you to, I want to suggest that you use some aloe vera gel from the leaf, not a lotion, not a medic, uh, you know, not a, the actual uh, filet, as they call it, from the actual plant itself. And they sell that uh, uh, fairly commonly uh, in the West here. The United States has it, uh, you know, Get an organic brand. You can get it at your health food store. And just put that raw aloe vera on the skin after you shave it. Let it dry on it. You'll feel it. It will dry right on it. And I want that is very, very helpful for the skin. If you shave your face every day, try to do that once or twice a week. And let it dry on it. Don't wipe it off. Let it dry right on the skin. And when you smile or you do something like that, then you'll feel it kind of crack and crinkle. And that's okay. You know, that's the, the glucosides are, are, you know, stationing themselves over the pores. And that's all right. <sighs> Looking for more information here. You have some superfoods that she wants you to partake of. Avocado. Organic av avocado. Organic banana. Organic cacao beans. Or the beans that, that, that make cho they make chocolate from. Corn, organic sweet corn. I know corn isn't listed as a superfood, but it is. Carrot juice, fresh pressed carrot juice. This, all of these will aid uh, the body in its flow of chi, in its flow of prana, but also in the flow of the kundalini as the kundalini positions itself within your body, okay? Um, I also drink a uh, kefir, and I will suggest kefir also for the people that uh, uh, that are going through kundalini. And, and if you go on YouTube, you can, you can see how people make their own kefir, and I think that's a great idea. Uh, you can make it with whatever ingredients you want. You can mix uh, fruit into it or whatever you want. You can, you know, probably not coffee or anything hot, but I don't know. Who knows? Maybe you could. But there are billions of organisms there, and they, they, they create a tremendous level of life force in the body that the kundalini will partake of and merge into your physical system just the same way that you would merge any kind of food or plant material. So get the kefir at the store or make it yourself and go onto YouTube and you can see how do, do I make kefir and they will show you very, 
very easily on how to how to make the kefir and it is good it is very very good for you so definitely uh, take that in okay so this seems to be about it right now and she wanted me to mention grapefruit seed extract so you can use that in various ways um, be gentle if you apply it to your skin however it's it's a very very strong uh, cleanser you can clean a countertop with it so there you have that so that's with the physical body just for this moment for this one time being I may come back again and do physical detox number two okay hopefully this is still recording uh, I think it's still can I get some smiley faces or something to let me know that you're still getting this <laughs> okay I, I'll wait for that uh, but anyway, okay, so we're moving on. We talked about it, the, some of the emotional detoxification, and this is the crying. Uh, this will be the bouts of anger, the bouts of, oh, thank you. I see some of the thumbs up there. Thank you very much for that. Uh, the bouts of uh, sadness, this incredible sadness will come upon you, and you just got to go, okay, I'm at the bottom of the valley. You know, the sine wave. I'm at the bottom of the valley here, so... I can deal with this. I can work with this. Kundalini is giving this to me for a reason. I can. I give myself permission to feel sad. You're not feeling sad because she wants you to immediately stop feeling sad. It's not the reason. You need to feel sad because, once again, it's broadening the spectrum of the human emotional spectrum. And so you're, you know, you have to visit the far end so that you can appreciate where you are within it. Uh, but eventually, yes, you will come up. You will come up the other side of the sine wave, and this is fine. This is good. Uh, so you may give yourself permission to feel sad. Give yourself permission to feel angry when the kundalini brings that to you, not just because you're in a pissy mood because somebody pulled in front of you on the, on the motorway, okay? <laughs> or somebody got in your parking place. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay, so you'll also conversely feel extreme exuberance about things in life uh, extreme joy extreme gratitude extreme appreciation love you'll love everything you'll love everything you'll be in love with the garbage on the side of the road you'll be in love with the crappy paint job on your car you'll be in love with You'll be letting people in front of you on the roadway. You'll be going, oh, come on in. Everybody behind you will be hating you. <laughs> come on in. <laughs> you'll be giving love to, to, to everyone and everything. So appreciative. And this, too, is part of that spectrum that is being broadened within you. So allow this to occur. Nothing is wrong. Try not to be so wildly happy in front of your friends or family. They'll know something's wrong. Oh, Chrisom. Did you see how Chrisom was? Oh, my God. It's like, something's wrong. He must be on a drug or something. Do you think he was drunk? He, he seemed kind of like, you know, that happy drunk stage. It's like, well, I don't know. He hates alcohol, so how could he be drunk? He, he must have been high on something, though. Maybe we should have an intervention. Hmm. This has been done, by the way. I, I'm joking about it here, but it has been done to people that have kundalini. The friends and family got together and said, she's too happy. Something's not right. She's too happy. We need to stop that. Can't be too happy in this world. <laughs> So you may want to calm it down a little bit, you know, if, if you got a, some alone space, like in your car, if you're driving to work in your car, back and forth to work, that's the time to be happy and grateful and appreciative, but, you know, keep your eyes on the road, and hands on the wheel. <laughs> All right. So, uh, and cry. Allow yourself to cry. So ladies, if you're wearing a lot of eye makeup, make sure it's waterproof. 
or don't wear it uh, or maybe put it on when you're at work, maybe when your Kundalini isn't having you cry so much. Okay, it's important because, you know, that can, you know, having your face streaked with mascara as, as you come to work may not be the most positive uh, action that You may feel absolutely dull sometimes. You will feel so dull, like, you know, totally not the sharpest knife in the set. You will feel dull. You won't, how, you won't know how to, like, socialize with people. Uh, for other reasons, you won't be going to parties or to, you know, group gatherings because you know you just don't fit in anymore. Nothing's wrong. With the emotional body, as, as well as the physical body, you'll go through sine waves. You'll have your ups and your downs, your ups and your downs, and, and you want to just realize that and be okay with that. See, this is your higher mental functioning process is going, ah, that's the Kundalini. Ah, okay. All right, I can just go with this flow. I can just go with this flow. Okay. And that's what I suggest that you do. Now, you may not want to go into large groups of people like malls or airports or stadiums or, you know, things where you have masses of amount of people. If you're in a some of the delicate stages of the of the uh, processing of Kundalini, uh, you can be wide open to attack, uh, to uh, to infestation, to, you know, it's like it's like putting little cuts on yourself. And, and just so, uh, just enough so that you can bleed and then walking into the jungle filled with mosquitoes. That's an analogy that is pretty correct. Okay. So if she is guiding you to, to not go into these crowded venues at this time, don't go into the crowded venue. Don't force yourself. It's like, well, I got tickets for the basketball game. Oh my God, what, what do you mean? <laughs> Give them to someone else or, you know, sell them on the side of the road. Hey, front, front row seat. Um, but, but be aware of going into crowded venues and don't do it if you're being guided not to do it. Okay, that's if you're being guided not to do it. Uh, so be careful about that because you'll feel, and sometimes you'll feel smart. You'll know every answer in, in, in the multiverse. You'll have every answer. You'll you'll know it all. You'll be that quintessential know it all, and and uh, that's also a gift of the Kundalini grace. And even though typically you won't be able to hold on to all that knowledge, it's once again a broadening of this. In this case, the mental body. See, now we're moving into the mental broadening. Okay, uh, you'll know everything, and sometimes you'll know nothing. It's like when I give these talks, I don't have a script. It's just, it's a stream. And sometimes your stream will, will dry up. And sometimes it's a flood that you just cannot, I mean, your mouth does not work fast enough to get it out. Okay. This is fine. Once again, this is something that you just become acclimated to and and the muscles and the tongue and the teeth and the, the mind will all connect uh, to give out the level of information that needs to be gotten out at the time that you're giving it. Remember, you've surrendered to the Kundalini. So she is broadening and changing and transforming the physical body, the emotional body, and the mental body. And now let's move on to the egotistical body because I'm, I'm sure people are really getting bored. Egotistical body. Now, this is where we live. We live from the ego. Oh, I just, I just had to wear this red shirt today because it just goes so well with my beard, and and it goes so well with my background here, and this background, and that. It's just like, oh my God, it's just so. I just love it. <laughs> you know, forget the fact that it needs to be ironed. Um, we really have to put the brakes on the ego. We cannot kill the ego but we purify the ego by forcing it to do what it does not want to do. This develops self-discipline. So 
gosh, I just want that chocolate, gooey, caramel candy bar. Oh, my God. The ego is saying this. Candy bar, candy bar, candy bar, candy bar. <laughs> and you've got to go, no. No candy bar. No. No, 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 no. No candy bar. And you move away from the candy bar. Okay. And this goes into, to, you know, every facet of life. I mean, it's like, oh, uh, beautiful person there. Oh, sex, 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 sex. Oh, uh, uh, connection, connection, partnership, partnership, emotion, emotion, love, love, love. Temporary love. <laughs> Infatuation love, you know. And once again, you've got to say, you've got to put the brakes on and say no, no. No, my child. This is your inner child that you're dealing with here. And when you're doing your 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 physical fitness, and you know, and you, you know, you're just waking up, and it's just like this great sleep, and you're just going, oh, "Okay, I'm going to get up to my physical fitness," and the ego is going, "No, no, no, sleep, sleep, sleep." You got to get up, and you got to do your physical fitness. This is how you train the ego. It's a, it's a process of, of denial, really, because we live so much from the ego that to deny it is to teach it. But you've got to deny it in the right way, in the right circumstances. So uh, the ego sees a, a new job for you to have. It's like money, 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 money. I, I want money, 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 money. And you look at that job and you go, hmm, yeah. We could use more money. All right. Boom. There you go. Okay. So there are times when you can agree with the ego, and there are times when you can disagree with the ego. I disagree with the idea of killing the ego as some of the Sanskrit saints like to teach. You got to kill the ego. You can't have the ego. You know, and it's just like, no, no, no. You don't kill a part of yourself. You retrain it. This takes discipline. This taste takes work, but it's very worth it. It's like the Huna, the Huna religion, which is the Polynesian religion that's like thousands of years old. The ego is called the Unihipili. That's the, their name for the ego. The higher mental self is called the Uhane. And that would be from where we're speaking of right now. And the Kundalini is the Amakua. Okay, that is the high God self. And the progression is like this. The Unihipili wants to become higher mental functioning person. Higher mental functioning person wants to become Amakua. And that is an appropriate progression. Indeed. But the only way that the Ohani can communicate with Amakua is through Unihipili. So, Uhane says to Unihipili, hey, uh, I want to get a, another job, one that doesn't have all these toxins in it. And you visualize the job to the Unihipili, and the Unihipili sends it to Amakua, and, and you send your energy with it too. And there's a, a certain way to do this. We can do that another time. Uh, Unihipili sends it to Amakua. Amakua brings it into reality. This is a great system. This is a great system, but it's not even taught by Hawaiians anymore. You know, you know, the, the, the Hawaiians have different flavors of, of their huna, you know, and and, and uh, this this is this is taken from the the the, uh, the teachings of Max Freedom Long. So you want to look him up on Amazon, Max Freedom Long, and uh, and good teaching, good work. He did very well. Uh, my Kundalini is very much in support of that uh, style of teaching and style of practice as well. Uh, so moving on, uh, we must deny the ego. But we must be aware of why we're denying it. The ego wants to seek pleasure over everything else. So 
uh, if it's having sex for pleasure, then you need to deny it that. That doesn't mean you become celibate. It just means that you need to to have more when you, you know, in, in, the, in, in the, the symphony of what sex is, there needs to be more than just one note. There needs to be a huge melody and harmony and graciousness and gratitude when a person has sex because you do share your soul when you have sexual congress with another person male or female, doesn't matter. You share a bit of your soul, but you also make karma. So uh, keep that in mind. But the, like I m mentioned, the chocolate bar or the new car or the or the clothing or the, you know, whatever it may be, you need to look at that and go, well, do I have enough clothes already? Do I do I need another shirt, another dress? another Do I, do I need this? Do I need those shoes over there? Probably not. Probably okay. I mean, of course, if you need the, the shirt or the dress or the shoes, then get them, get them. You know, if there's that need, I don't, you know. But if it's just something because it's just like, wow, it's cool. And, and everybody's got us now, you know, everybody's got us. So I got to have them too, or I'm just not fitting in. Then you can just retrain your ego around that type of a subject. All right. So ego and Ego mind and psychological mind are the same thing because we are the psychology of the ego. That is who we are. And that is where we are within this society, the psychology of ego. Okay, the, the, the P-O-E. <laughs> the P-O-E, the PO. All right, so remember that. And to change the psychology towards self-discipline. Self-discipline. Now let's move on to the spiritual aspect. Your spirit is already really pure, unless you've allowed yourself to come in contact with people that are bent on contaminating it. You can contaminate your spirit by uh, falling into the energy or the teachings of a person that is not helpful to you. Uh, people that are giving you information that is based more upon their own entity possession than it is on kundalini uh, expression. And so this is this is why it's very important for you to be very discerning about who you take kundalini information from. Very important. Okay. Uh, there are a lot of people out there, most of them, by far the vast majority, that are putting out incorrect information about kundalini. Seriously. I run into it every single day. Well, so-and-so told me this, and so-and-so told me that, and so-and-so in their book said this, this, or that. Uh, no, 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 no. And I will not be afraid. I will not shirk from the responsibility my kundalini has given to me to, to call them out on it. You don't need to be celibate to have kundalini or to nurture the kundalini. You don't need to be a vegetarian. And you definitely don't need to be vegan. Vegan is one of the most mistaken ideologies out there, and it just spreads like a cancer. Okay? These are the types of, of uh, unfortunate information that are being pushed out there into the public. It's not true. Okay. You're not going to turn into an angel. That's not true either. Just because you might be developing wings on your shoulder blades, and some people can feel that, doesn't mean you're turning into an angel. It just means that the, the kundalini is taking flight within the individual and is growing certain proportions attached to the energetic anatomy that resemble wings. That's what that means. So you're not changing into an angel. Angels are a completely different creation. You're not automatically going to be hooked up with your twin flame. I'm going to be gentle. The twin flame scenario is really the Shakti and Shiva within the individual that they misinterpret as being somebody on the outside that they're waiting to 
connect with. Shakti and Shiva is coming together. Not you and, and Mr. or Mrs. 20. Okay. Shakti and Shiva are the two twin flames that are coming together. Not you and another mortal being. Not to say that that can't happen. I mean, you can find a person that is really, really right up the alley for you. But the twin flame is Shakti and Shiva. Sacred feminine, sacred masculine. And no, you don't get to assume that you are that. Okay. You are the sacred child. You are the sacred progeny of Shakti and Shiva coming together. And what happens when Shakti and Shiva come together? Kundalini. You are reborn into the grace of the divine that you are okay that's the deal it's not twin flames it's not twin hearts it's not anything that is external to the internalization of what is occurring for you but i know i'm stepping on toes again so be that as it may once again i'm not afraid to gently step on people's toes gently or not gently I mean, you know sometimes i can be abrupt and I want to apologize for that. Sometimes you need to be abrupt to get a person's attention. So steer clear of these teachers and these books and these videos that your kundalini does not resonate with. This is how you purify the spiritual body. You go with what your kundalini says, not an entity inside you. Okay. Not what your best friend says. Hey, there's that guy over there, and he's just wow. He's just talking all kinds of Kundalini stuff, you know. And, and they don't know it. They know it because they know it's a powerful, powerful event in a human's life. But many of them are just talking, so that they can sound like they know. They, they, they go through the internet and they so Kundalini starts at the base of the spine. And it comes up a uh, esophagus, I mean the spine, and you know, they're just basically, you know, copying from from other material. Kundalini is not evil, so don't don't uh, try to hook it up to if you're a practicing Satanist or Luciferian or whatever. Uh, don't uh, try to hook it up to to negativity. And uh, I'm not saying that, that all Luciferians are negative either. If you ever do any research on Lucifer and Luciferianism, uh, that's, not a, that's not devil worship or satanic or anything like that. It's, it, in the ancient world, it meant it, you were following a, uh, a course of enlightenment. Satanism, on the other hand, you know, that, that's got more of a... Of a demonic type of uh, frequency to it stay away from that stay away from that so you stay away from anything that is going to cause you problems and one thing you you really need to know from within a spiritual level context is negativity never shares power never it always takes it takes it will it will drain you till you're a prune of any and all energy until you just become a husk of what, who you and what you once were. And don't go into this, you know, this really irritates me. It's, well, you have to get to know your shadow self in order to know the true complexity of the whole being of what you are. Now, we're surrounded by negativity all our lives. We have negative karma that we're constantly refining ourselves through. You don't need to actively go into hurtful, negative, energetic belief systems or energetic fields in order to discover the negativity within yourself. You just got to look at how you treat other people. And, you know, the golden rule, do as you would do unto others as you would do to yourself. And where do you fall in to that frequency? Where do you fall into that, uh, to that level of, of, spectrum how much are you doing to others that you'd like to have done to yourself are you giving people money or are you giving them shit is that the kind of shit that you want to receive 
Well, then why are you giving it to them? <laughs> That's how you can explore your shadow side. You don't need to go into Satanism. You don't need to go into Enochian magic, which is another big no-no. You don't need to let entities possess you because they're paranormal. I want to be a medium because I want everybody to come and listen to me. You know, no. No. Look at how you treat other people. Improve the way you treat the environment, uh, the social environment, other people, the grass, the bugs, the birds, the animals, the fish, the ocean, the water, the air, the plants, everything. Look at how you treat that and then look at how you treat or you want to be treated. And then treat yourself that way. You'll see whether or not you're positive or negative. In the way you treat other people and the other creations on this world that's the spiritual purification and you can see how incredibly important it is incredibly important and you what basically you're doing is you're refining yourself out of the containment of egotistically infested uh society might might is right fear of loss want of gain you're, you're basically sifting your way out of that paradigm into the divine paradigm which you must do you must do these purification forms You must do these purification forms because in order to hold a divine frequency, the, the container of that divine frequency needs to be, to be purified of distortion. And I use the word distortion purposefully because it comes down to frequencies. So the cleaner that you are within your body and your five bodies of expression, the much stronger you are in being able to contain and hold divine information and divine transformation. Now, I'm going to come to David's question. What happens when we die? It's different for everybody. I mean, there are, there are general things that are the same. Uh, lots of times uh, pe people will go through a tunnel and uh, if you've ever gone out of body you can kind of see that tunnel that that you go through but the difference is is when you've actually detached from the body first of all you feel really good you feel really light uh and for for a lot of people uh there are helpers there there are spiritual helpers there that are helping guide you on your way you're not alone a lot of people will, will experience family members they'll experience family members uh, telling them hey hey Chris come on over here yeah this is your dad come on over here you know and so you'll be led into an area of it's, it's a it's another form of purification so you go up the tunnel now some people that go up the tunnel they're seeing entities on either side the entities are trying to pull them in and you just want to look up and ignore anything that you see on the side of the tunnel and you just go straight in there now people will say you go into the light go into the light you know a lot of near-death people say oh, go into the light and that's okay you can go into the light if you want um, But what you really want to do is you, you want to come to a place where there is a level of extreme truth, truth of who you were in this life. And then you get to experience it. So you might just say uh, you go into the hall of memories. Okay. And these memories you get to experience 
everything that you did and how you felt about it and what other people around you felt about what you just did and the chain reaction of events that occurred over that one thing that you did and you go through every single thing that you did and you're thinking right now it's like whoa that's going to take a long time it's not it doesn't take a long time at all and besides time doesn't really exist there you could do it in a nanosecond or you could do it in a billion years but time does not exist uh, outside of this earth plane okay so when you're dead you are no longer bound by the rules of time you are however bound by the rules of karma karma is there how did you treat yourself how did you treat other people how did you treat the planet the animal the air the water the earth how did you treat the school that you were allowed to partake of in order to learn how to become more of a divine divinely conscious individual what did you learn and how did you learn it Okay. What did you do? What didn't you do? So you go into that hall of memories and you re-experience yourself. And then you go into another life because now you can remember other lives. And you compare. Where did I, how did I do that? Did I come ahead of it? Was I behind it? And you are your own judge, my friend. You are your own judge. And because your heart is so focused on the divine frequency that is pouring through you as a soul. You're looking at it like, where did I screw up? Oh, my God. Oh, Lord. Okay. All right. You're writing that down. I'm just figuratively assuming you're writing it down. Okay. Way too fixated on my car. Way too fixated. Way too fixated on my bikini body way too fixated on money way too fixated on dominating other people way too you see what i'm saying okay and you're you're looking at this and you're looking at the line of refinement that you have experienced and you're seeing how how did you flow with that line where do you need to make corrections and this is where karma comes in you you're you're you are intimately aware of karma in that state karma is a great tool it's a great gift and you realize it you know eventually you're going to realize you may not realize it right off the bat because you're so blown away by the whole experience of death and dying and, and being taken from this place to another place and oh jesus is real and oh buddha is real and oh allah is real and oh my gosh they're all real and oh there is I am real. I am alive, and, and I just not. I don't have flesh. I'm not feeling hunger. I'm not feeling thirst. But I am feeling like I need to make some corrections uh, based upon what happened in this life. So I need to go back and do it again. But I need help in orchestrating the karma redemption. I need to meet someone who I have to listen to or to obey or to, to give my soul the teachings that it needs to have in order to come into a greater level of purity that I may hold a greater level of divinity that I may give this divinity to the billions of people and animals and creatures in the physical plane which I will be going back into. This is a big deal. Okay, there's a lot of, of uh, observations. Like you got entities here and there and all over the place. They're observing how you do what you do and why you do what you do. They're learning from your actions and from your mistakes and from your victories. They are learning what it is to do the human school, the zero. To divinity school this is a very fast school and by its speed it is a very difficult school very difficult 
and they're seeing that they're going oh my god you only get five senses ah! <laughs> five anyway so when you're dead you're looking at these things and you're reuniting with friends that have passed you're reuniting with family that has passed with pets that have passed you're reuniting there's a lot of reuniting there's a lot of love going around a lot of love a lot of love now if you have dabbled in some of these darker things then you know you're going there too you can see what that's like and you know what part of you needed to do that in order to do that so for some people they'll go straight into a hell realm or a hell zone and they'll stay there for a little while that too is a learning the classroom but it's not a permanent one like the Christians teach or other systems that don't know teach uh, it's a temporary thing you just have to learn those lessons you have to learn them well and once you've learned them then you move on okay uh, but for you David you know uh, you know as you continue to come into your Kundalini grace you're gonna lo be looking at factors that influenced your Kundalini grace uh, why why are you born in the country that you're born in why are you born in the society that you're in why are you born in the family that you're in and, and what you're doing in order to to uh, uh, vitalize the refinement that you're going through and you know it's like it's like with my father my father you know you know he's passed away he's on he's on the other plane he's on the other side but I don't need to communicate with him he's watching sometimes but he's got other things to do okay there are other things to do and so will any of your parents any of your spouses or your children or whoever passes away they're not dead really we never really die we just it's just like we change a position and we go ah okay ah okay this is what i have to do now okay and then they can dive right back into the body again you know the new body a baby body right and uh, and that person is loaded. They come preloaded with all that karma. Preloaded. And they come in and they do the birth thing. And and of course, you know the idea is you have to to forget all of what you know and just begin to learn again. And you get to learn from the teaching that the karma gives you. I don't think that's your question, but uh, that's kind of that's that's a, a thumbnail sketch of what occurs when we die. Okay, no streets of gold unless you bought into that. But you, know, you don't need gold, you know. And, and gold is all about want of gain and fear of loss. And you know, if, if the world were made of gold, then people would kill each other for a handful of dirt. And dirt is basically the excrement of a lot of different creatures so I mean you know I, I wouldn't take some of the Sunday school teachings that you may have received seriously okay now let me see if we have any more questions uh, I'm gonna scroll up here um, appreciate everybody who is watching right now I have a broken nose should I make surgery and fix it or just let it to the Kundalini to decide uh, I'm an Amen um, is it interrupting your breathing you know if it's interrupting your breathing and the Kundalini has placed you within the proximity of a surgeon who can repair it then get it repaired rhinoplasty I don't think that's the term that's that's the term for uh, plastic surgery of the nose but but yeah, if, it, if it's impeding your breathing, then fix it. If you were living in the jungle right now and there's no, no other remedial option, then I'd say just leave it to the Shakti. She might bump your nose again on, you know, as you're swinging through the jungle on the, on the jungle vines. You know, she may have you just into a tree. It's, fix the nose! I'm laughing, but you know that type of thing happens. So, uh, it, uh, and and if it's if it's interrupting your breathing through the nose, fix it. 
Let's see, and then, then listening. So we've got other people here. And uh, feel free to ask a question or to write it out. Uh, yeah, it looks like everybody's doing just fine. Okay. Well, then, I would like to say to everyone, thank you for wasting another good Saturday evening <laughs> listening to me. And uh, have a beautiful, beautiful sleep rest tonight for those of you in Asia and in Europe. And for those of you on the uh, East Coast, which it is it is now uh, 5 o'clock, you know, uh, have a beautiful dinner. You know, enjoy the sunset. Live your life to the fullest. Fill yourself with love. Remember, you can look for, for shadows anywhere if you want to, but look for love the most. And remember... To explore your shadow side, explore your loving side and how much you give. And that will tell you where you are with your shadow side. I love you all and I thank you all for watching. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs>